installing the ID Cooling SC214 XT. We're going to show you how to do it in both Intel and AMD, so no matter which CPU you're using, you'll be able to do it just fine. We're going to start with AM4, and before you do anything else, your motherboard needs to look like this right here with nothing else connected to the back plate around the outer edge of the CPU. You're going to need these two metal braces, and you're going to need the screws that come with the red smooth standoffs. If you're doing a newer AM5 CPU, the 7000 series, just read the directions carefully because the standoff is not the red one. For Intel CPUs, we're going to use the gray smooth standoffs. They're smooth and they're rough. We're going to install the metal braces first. The red standoffs will be on top of the little holes that go into the back plate, like so. Then we will put the metal braces down and put the screw in to hold them in place. For the AMD socket, make sure the metal braces are turned this way. I know I knocked my washers over, but this is the way they should be turned when you screw them in. Make sure you understand this is for AMD CPUs, not Intel. For the Intel socket, you actually need to turn the metal braces the other way, so it should look like this right here. Now we're going to put on the metal heat sink, but make sure you take this sticker off before you do anything else. <coughs> Stop right here and make sure you put thermal paste on top of your CPU. There's a little packet that comes with the coolers in the box. Just put that right in the middle and you'll be just fine. Now we're going to screw the heat sink down, making sure that the two screws line up with the threaded part that's on the metal braces that we installed earlier. Do not tighten one down before you tighten the other, so get them both started, then you can tighten one all the way and then the other. Otherwise it's going to be this weird awkward tension that you don't want. Now we have to clamp the fan on to the heat sink using these thin metal hook things, and you want to put them through the holes in the fan just like this right here. You should have one of these metal things on each side. When you clamp it on the heat sink, I always like to make it face the RAM because most of the time that's where the air is coming in from the front of your case. Just pull the little metal wires apart and clamp it onto the heat sink. There's a little groove that it kind of snaps into and it kind of looks like this on the side. Now once you have the motherboard installed it's time to plug everything up. For the fan's power, it is a four pin power connector that looks like this. And you're going to want to plug it somewhere on the motherboard that says CPU fan. Every motherboard's different but it'll kind of look like this. Just plug it in so that the plastic edges on the back line up with the little plastic edge on the motherboard and it should just slide right in. To plug up the RGB, find a little header on your motherboard that looks like this that'll say 5 volt RGB. This motherboard that I had currently only had a 12 volt RGB, so I had to have a little adapter thing on the back that come with my case fortunately that actually has the three pins that look like this. You just take the little plug that looks like this and just slide it in on those three pins and there you have RGB. It's one of the easiest coolers I've ever installed. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and then go watch this video.